Hi there. This morning we're going to be doing a small study on who is Mystery Babylon according to scriptures, okay? Scripture gives us a big checklist and it's not just Revelation 17, okay? Scripture gives us a big checklist on who the mother of harlots and abominations is, okay? So the very first thing, there's a few things that we're going to be talking about in this video. Okay, some of these have been talked about before, some of them haven't. Okay, um, the very first thing that we're going to be talking about is the millstone, then we're going to be talking about the robe, then the people of the prince that shall come, and all of these are pointers to who Mystery Babylon is. So very first thing in your King James Bible, we're going to be going over the robe, um, the, sorry, the millstone. So if you go in your King James Bible, first of all, to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 verse 6 But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were tied about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Okay, we're going to be reading other two parallel verses to this, so if you go to Mark chapter 9 in your King James Bible, Mark chapter 9 verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. Luke chapter 17. I'm sorry if you hear some like grumbling in the background there, brethren, I've got a little bit of stomach upset right now. But Luke chapter 17, verse 2. Verse 1 through 2. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible but that offences will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Okay? So right here what we've seen from the three parallel verses here, that um, the, the punishment for paedophilia, okay, it'd be better for that man that he have a a millstone tied about his neck and he'd be cast into the sea. Okay? That doesn't mean that paedophiles can't be saved today. Okay? If someone's committed something like that, that wicked sin, you can repent, you can get saved. Okay? But we're going to be looking at this. The reason why we've chose to look at these millstone arguments is because this is the judgment that's on, that's on paedophiles. Okay? This millstone. And then, when you look at Revelation chapter 18, okay, Revelation chapter 18, verse 21, okay, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now, why are um why is Mystery Babylon getting the same judgment as paedophiles? The scripture is clearly indicating to us that Mystery Babylon has been involved in paedophilia. Okay? Which church out there calls itself the mother church and has been involved in countless paedophilia cases? That's your first hint to who Mystery Babylon is. Next, in the King James Bible, we're going to be talking about the robe. Okay? When our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ was crucified, um, they'd put a robe on him. The Roman soldiers had put a robe on him. I mean, you do a study into what this robe was, and the Lord will show you some things, like, um, starting off at Matthew chapter 27, and we'll read verse 17 through 28. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? 
for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They say, they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, see ye to it. Then answered all the people, and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Okay? They put on they put on the Lord a scarlet robe. The Roman soldiers did that. Okay, but we'll be looking at the parallel verses, okay? Mark doesn't have one that talks about the robe, okay? But if we go to the book of Luke, chapter 23. Luke, chapter 23. Verses 8 through 11. Now you'll notice this time it says Herod. <coughs> Okay. Starting at verse 8. When Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him, and Herod with his men of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Okay? You see this time, Herod, in, in this account, Herod put the robe on the Lord. There's no contradictions in scripture. It's the Lord trying to show you something. Okay? Like, why is it just a gorgeous robe when Herod put the robe on, but when Pilate put the robe on the Lord, it's a scarlet robe? The Lord wants us to know the colour of that robe that Pilate put on the Lord for some reason. Okay? Now the last one is John 19. John chapter 19, verses 1 through 2. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. So here we see Pilate being mentioned again. And it's a purple robe this time. Okay? The Lord doesn't put any contradictions in his word. Okay, the Lord has obviously done this in scripture because he, he wants us to know the colours of Rome. Purple and scarlet. Okay? God clearly seen it fit to show us the colour of the robe in the accounts concerning pilots. Okay? But when... But when it was when it but when it came to Herod, just a gorgeous robe. The Lord's trying to point out to us the colours of Rome are purple and scarlet. Okay. The next thing we'll be talking about, if you turn your King James Bible to Daniel chapter nine. Daniel chapter nine, and first of all we're gonna read verse four twenty four through twenty seven. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem Unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. 
but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the world desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the ablation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, now look at verse 26 and 27 here. But after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Okay, now notice there's a colon there. Now look after the colon. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay. Now, that's not talking about the Lord there, the, the people of the prince that shall come. Okay. How do we know? Because look at the next verse. And he shall confirm the covenant with men for one week. Okay. That's not speaking of the Lord there. The prince that's to come. That's the Antichrist. Okay. How do we know that? Because when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. He is the king of kings. And Lord of Lords, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ doesn't come back as a prince. It comes back as king. Do you know what I mean? So here that we see the, the prince of the people sh that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. It's talking about the Antichrist here. Because he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay, we're not going to go over there for the sake of time because I'm trying to keep this video kind of short. But if you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, showeth himself he is God. Paraphrase that, but, uh, heavily, heavily sorry about that. Okay, but just for the sake of time, do you know what I'm saying? That this um, Antichrist is going to come back and he's going to bring back these, the Jewish oblations to begin with. And then in the midst of the week, cuts it off, okay? Causes the, the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And when you look into Revelation do a study, halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble, the mark of the beast then shows up. Okay? So, what we're, we're focusing on here is who this prince is and who are his people. Okay? Who destroyed that second temple? Okay? Because, um, forgetting in the book of Daniel, that was, um, that's roughly set around second kings kind of year and the second temple wasn't even built yet so Daniel's prophesying here of the destruction of the second temple and it says the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary okay what Daniel's saying in this verse in 26 is that the sanctuary and the city is going to be destroyed and do you know the people who destroy it yeah that's the people of the antichrist Okay, and when we do a little bit of digging there, okay, because um, the destruction of the second temple is only prophesied in scripture, but when you do a little search, just go, who destroyed the second temple in Jerusalem? Okay. Now, the second temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman Empire. Okay? The second temple was destroyed by the Roman Empire. Okay, it was something that was a, a big war kind of thing. It was called the Siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. It was destroyed by the Romans. Okay? But it goes a little bit further than that. We're going to look into the destruction of the first temple as well. So, if you go into um, Second Kings, Second Kings chapter twenty-five. Second Kings twenty-five.
verses 1 through 10. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he and all his host against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and they built forts against it round about, and the city was besieged, unto the eleventh year of king Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night, by the way of the gate, between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees, keep that in mind, pursued after the king, and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king, and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King, ba um, King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant unto the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees, there's that word again, that were with the captain of the guard, break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Okay? Now who destroyed the first temple? It was a coalition between Babylon, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, and the Chaldeans. Okay? Now it's really interesting is when you Google, like, just do a little Google search, okay? If you Google search who the Chaldeans are today, Okay. The Chaldeans today, okay, if you type this into Google, just type it in, Chaldeans today, you'll come up with the, the little Google box will pop up and it'll say, Chaldeans are Aramaic speaking Eastern Rite Catholics that are indigenous to Iraq. Chaldeans have a history that spans more than 5,500 years dating back to Mesopotamia, which is also known as the Cradle of Civilization in present day Iraq, okay, whatever. But like, there's this, um... The Chaldeans in Babylon, do you know, the, the Babylonians, ancient Iraqis, okay, the Chaldeans are Eastern Rite Catholics by faith. It's the same coalition that has been going on for centuries, do you know what I mean? The Catholics have always used the Muslims as a fall guy for their violence. Okay. Now why did I mention Chaldea? Because Chaldeans mentioned in scripture. Okay. It really does seem that the Lord is trying everything he can to point out to us all through his scriptures that Rome is mystery Babylon and Catholicism is the rehashment of ancient Babylon. It's all just it's all their evil plan. They've been, they've been doing these same tricks. Okay, there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same things they've been doing for centuries. I mean, you look at when you look at the belief system of Catholicism. You look, look at it. It's all Babylonian. It's all Babylonian worship. That's what it is. It's, it's devils. Okay. And I'm not being funny as well, but the, the date of the, the siege of Jerusalem it started on April 14th, 70 AD. And again, that's another big date than a lot of these, um, like a lot of the Jesuit planned attacks, such as um, the, the Titanic, which was, they didn't just sink that ship, that ship was built to sink, okay, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. But like, um, to, in order to save the Federal Reserve, the Jesuits sank the Titanic, okay. In order to to save their, um, their their wicked agendas, they they killed off Lincoln. 
okay? And they've done these all, all these same things on the same date, April 14th. Titanic. And the sinking of the Titanic was April 14th, 1912. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln was April 14th, 1965, I think it was. 1865, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, look up what April 14th actually is. It's, um, it's a Catholic holiday, it's the, the Catholic pagan black mass thing. Okay? That's what that date is. So think of all these times throughout the world where people have been slaughtered and the Catholics are in their temples praying to their way for God. That's black magic. It's witchcraft. These are satanic rituals that the Vatican is performing. Okay. So here we're seeing one more time that the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, by the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, essentially the Catholics and the Muslims. Okay. The second temple was seized by the Romans okay and we know that the, the Vatican created the, the Islam thing okay Muhammad's wife was actually a Catholic and do you know it's it's the same thing that's been going on all throughout history okay the sons of Ishmael do you know the, the Chaldeans in other words okay the Chaldeans and the not the Chaldeans sorry but the the sons of Ishmael the Iraqis Okay, the the Arabs, the Muslims, they have always been used by Catholicism to to do the real nasty stuff. Okay, always. It's even here in Scripture. Okay, but there is one more point I would like to go over, which is an obvious point. This one is, but um. If you go lastly to Revelation chapter 17. So we've been through the, the judgment on the millstone. We've been through the robe. We've been through the identification of the people of the prince that shall come. Now if you go to Revelation chapter 17. And go down to verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Okay. And again, do a Google search for this one. Please um, please make sure that I'm t telling you the truth. Okay. There's only one city on this earth that sits on seven mountains. Only one. Okay. So we'll just we'll just Google that, okay? For the for the sake of it. What city sits on seven mountains? Okay? The very first result that comes up is the city of Rome. If you're a Roman Catholic watching this, um you haven't yet been saved, okay? You need to get saved. You you do need to get saved. Okay? You need to get saved. There'll be a small salvation message linked at the end of this video. But scripture clearly teaches that the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth is Roman Catholicism. It's Roman Catholicism. That's what it is. Is are in the Church of the Antichrist. If, if you're a Catholic, you're in the Church of the Antichrist and you really need to do get out of it. Okay? I mean, like, why don't you, why do you think if you're a Catholic out there and you try and take the King James Bible to one of your priests or pastors or whatever like that, that they will literally shout at you? They want, the Catholics want nothing to do with the King James Bible because it exposes them for what they are. Okay? If you're a Roman Catholic, 
please get saved. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay? Rome's days are numbered, okay? Not by man, but by the Lord himself, okay? Because here's what's going to happen. We're going to read Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through... Three twenty one, okay. Now um, this shows you the the future of of the mother of harlots and abominations, okay. This shows you the the future. Okay, now this is in the time of Jacob's trouble. At the end of it, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, okay. See, Catholicism can act like all the imposters it wants to right now, but see when the King of Kings and Lord the Lords the Lord the Glory shows up. Yeah, um, yeah, they won't be able to lie anymore. Okay. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11, unto the end of the chapter. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth. And the fowls of the air were filled with the flesh. Okay. So that's the judgment of that's what happens to the beast and the false prophet and to those um to those who take the mark. Okay. And also think about that one, do you know what I mean? Catholics and left, right and centre, literally, by the way. Literally that was not just a pun, that was literal a literal statement as well. But Catholics literally, left, right and centre, like to put marks on people. Okay. Look through all history. You had Adolf Hitler. Okay, Adolf Hitler was actually he was actually acting under the influence of let me get the Pope's name up there now for that. Adolf Hitler was actually working under the influence of Pope Pius XII. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So um don't just go blaming Hitler for everything, yeah. Hitler was a coadjutor. He wasn't, it wasn't his plans, put it that way. He was, he was his orders. Okay? The orders were given to him by the Vatican. But last, last time in judgment on the Vatican here. Revelation chapter 18 verse 21 through 24. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, 
for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth okay There you have it from scripture. Romans Mystery Babylon. Okay. Rome is Mystery Babylon. And um the one more thing that she was to do with that kind of case is when you when you actually look at um the Chaldeans again. You see that the Chaldeans they choose Catholicism as their main religion. And it's um it's funny for what the the head of the the, the Catholic and um, the Chaldean Catholics are called, the the head of the bishops and the this, okay it says here that Chaldeans are Eastern Rite Catholic, and united with the Roman Catholic Church, but have separate bishops and a separate patriarch, okay. Now the patriarch for the the Catholic Church over in Chaldea kind of thing, is known as the Patriarch of Babylon. Google it up, okay? I'll be putting these um, small screenshots from the the small searches that I've been doing here, and I'll be putting them in the video along the along the little video. I can't promise whether it's going to be in sync with the video or not, but I'll just be putting them up there. But according to scriptures, we we clearly see. It's Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism. It's the Church of Satan. You cannot worship that under any way, shape, or form. Okay. So to you poor Roman Catholics out there, okay, I don't hate you. Definitely not. I'm here making this video to preach to you to get, so that you get saved. You need to repent. You need to repent in that wicked system. You need to go down your knees and say, Lord. I'm so sorry that I've been deceived all these years that you've been you've been doing witchcraft. Okay? All the Catholic sacraments and all that when you go right down to the nitty gritty in the bottom line, you look at it all, it's it's ancient Babylon. Okay? That's why it's called Mystery Babylon. Okay? Because they've spent years trying to hide it. But the words are the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The King James Bible, the perfect word of God, says in Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay. As long as God's perfect word exists on this earth, the King James Bible, darkness will never prevail. Okay, it's never going to prevail. The evil of this world, its time's limited. That's why the Catholics hate the King James Bible so much, because it's the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, and. Catholicism really doesn't want the intents of its heart to be revealed. Okay? Again, if you're a poorly deceived Roman Catholic out there, please. You can't work your way into heaven. Okay? You need to repent of that wicked system. Repent. Okay? Repent. Have faith with the Lord Jesus Christ done for you on the cross. Call upon his name and he will save you. Okay? No more sacraments. No more having to drink a glass of wine every Sunday morning, no more of this paying a, a, a priest, do you know what I mean? No more of this communions, no more, of, no more of it, okay? You don't need to do any of that. You can have assurance knowing that you're saved, okay? I'll be putting a small salvation message at the end of this video. But I really, really, really do pray that you take heed to what I've said here, okay? Not to what I've said, sorry about that, okay? I'm just, I'm in a one. 
but rather to what the Word of God has said, okay, to what the Scriptures have said. Okay, please pause this video, go back a few times if you need to, write everything down that I say if you need to, okay, and make sure that I'm telling you the truth, honestly, please, okay. And with that said and done, I pray that you Roman Catholics out there get saved. I really do. And to those, to, to those of you, my brethren, who have watched this, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. The Lord does not sell act, concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, what is true biblical salvation? You must realise that you are a sinner and have personally sinned against God, and that you cannot get to heaven by your own good works. Only God can save you by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. You have sinned against God, as it is written. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Your good works cannot get you into heaven, as it is written. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, by which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, and that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And this is a condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, 
I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil.